Are you expecting anybody else like Jess, uh, Mike? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. That's always my favorite part of the job. All right. <laughs> we understand that. Okay. As the senior old guy, I will convene again. I'm, I'm not the chair and I'm not the vice chair. I'm just the occasional convener. Uh, so let's take a look at the, uh, oh, I guess we start the recording. Okay. Uh, all the commissioners except Lynn are here and Mike Sullivan is here. We're ready to go. We'll take a look at the at the uh, list of things to do. Any modifications in the agenda necessary? I guess we ought to do those minutes, huh, Mike? Yes, we have to do those minutes for Brooke. All right. No other agenda changes? Okay. So next item on the list is approval of prior minutes. So I read those, those are the ones of where we voted to accept the deal for $960,000. Correct. Any discussion? Those in favor of approving them say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, okay. So they're approved. Now, should I come and, and sign those, Mike, or do you wanna get Lynn or what? Um, and I think any of you can sign them. So if you can come in tomorrow, that's fine. Or if somebody comes in tomorrow, that's fine. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll come in tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Public comment. I don't think the public is capable of speaking because they're not here and we ain't hearing them. Um, discussion development of information for select board to utilize and evaluating board of commissioner candidates. So... So I sent that list of things around. I mean, what do you think they really want? They've always, they've always sought no advice from anybody else, done exactly as they please. Um, they haven't even asked for recommendations from anybody, much less from say either Lynn or Mike. But I, I think we made some progress on that in last week's discussion where there will be where, where they are now welcoming some input. I, I think they realize that they need some assistance. Yeah. 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 Whereas they didn't. But I think it's very good. They didn't before, yeah. You, so. One of the things that we, that they seem to accept the idea of at that meeting was that, that Mike might give them some, some mechanical or electrical or some sort of serious questions that they could ask. But that strikes me as kind of too detailed. No, I, I didn't interpret it that way. Did you, Mike? No, no. Oh, okay, okay. If that was just one of the, you know, the either or, you know, have that we want to compose a board that has complementary and diverse backgrounds. And right. one of the backgrounds might be like Michael brings us, you know, a different perspective on things. Mm -hmm. One person may be more technical, another more financial, what have you. Um. I'm looking for that list of stuff that I put down. I can't even find it now, of course. So here it is. That's so, what I do. I put things in a safe place and then I can't find yeah, them. Well, I found them. So so I'm your list, your list, I, I read it right away when you shot it over and it looked great. We can always improve, embellish, add to it. Um, Vince has got you know, Vince, in the context of what you're doing, you might have some ideas. Yeah, and um, actually, I'm just giving myself a deadline to get a draft of that info for next meeting. And it'll... What info was that, Vince? Oh, that was on the um, that was on the uh, onboarding. I'm sorry, what? Was that the onboarding package? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so Ned, I'll give you one, one commissioner's view that I'm, I'm supportive of your list, but uh, I don't think it needs, you know, like Mike or one of the two Mikes or Vince might want to add to it. I, well, you know, I think it should be mandatory that if someone wants to be a commissioner, they have to come to a meeting ahead of time, just to understand what happens. Yeah, but I that's, think, not, that's not I for think us. That's a great idea. 
I mean, we, we're in no position to tell the select board what's mandatory. Well, but we could, but they have, they've opened sense. the door and asked us for our advice. So let's advise that that I'm with Mike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think they want it to run smoothly and they want, I mean, I don't think they're necessarily willful about yeah. having, yeah. That, um, having a, having a, uh, a list of, of uh, and a range of duties and uh, uh, the type of information that they'll need to acquire and the time commitment and that kind of thing, you know, and like, uh, who, who was it that said uh, should be mandatory to, was that you, Michael, to uh, go to a meeting prior to, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah that's a great idea. Really is. Make it, make it a really uh, contentious meeting. <laughs> I, I think it should be more than one meeting. Yeah. A couple meetings. Okay. Let's say at least one. Huh? Yeah. So how would we say that? that That's our recommendation to ensure a good fit. <clears throat> Recommendation and 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 disclosure of, of what the position actually is because it you know I remember the listing it was it was pretty general and pretty vague you know when so what, I'm not understanding that you want them to be more specific in their advertisement you mean uh yeah and and to to make sure that the the people that are submitting the um you know that want to apply for the position are aware of of the scope of the duties yeah, i don't quite know how you say that to them but because i mean they're you know it's their it's, 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 oh i mean from I, I, more I, of I, a from more of a beginning structure thing here are we, are you, it's not me, are you trying to identify, you know, the five most important things you'd like to see in a member of the board, the eight most important, or just giving them random lists of, you know, these are things that would be great. It seems to me that we should target maybe the four to six most important things and give them some structure and detail on those items I, you know, and, I, but that's I my opinion. Them, I don't want to give them much structure at all because I mean I, I think we could easily annoy them. Uh, I don't want to give them very much advice at all, other than what we said here, and we can add to that that you know, we we would expect that any candidate would come to at least one select board meeting ahead of time. Um, but my point, Nat, is that you know we don't want to end up with board members like Danny Hale who come in here with an agenda, a personal agenda and a Hardwick agenda that is in contrast to what your duties and responsibilities are. So that to me would be a hugely important but structural I don't know key, you know, top five or six items. I, I but don't I don't know how you get those I five or six. Can, That's up to all of you. Yeah, I don't think you can write something that will tell them to make sure they don't pick a Danny Hale. I mean, it, no, we, we, I mean, we'd just be making recommendations and that this is based on the, the board's perspective, this is what would be most helpful and desirable. Yeah, for but right, if they don't like them, they can throw them out. That's right. fine. But I mean, in the case of Danny Hale, you know, you, what you would have to say would be, don't pick a guy who's got a big agenda. Yeah, and so, I mean, well, you, you don't want to say that. Sometimes you just don't know until they're there. Well, and I didn't, I didn't want, I mean, that's just an example of something that we don't want, you know? Well, how do you feel about uh, putting in a suggestion that uh, they might consider uh, requesting input on the candidates from either Lynn or you, Mike, or both? I would give them feedback on candidates. That's no problem. I think it's kind of odd that they have not in any way ever, as far as I know, approached either the chair, Lynn, or you, Mike. Not in my nine years, they haven't. Particularly when it comes to 
uh, extending a term. Yeah. Because they're, yeah. Right. Yep. I, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be helpful to have someone from the board well, you know, what are, uh, provide some input or be present in an interview or something. Ding, 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 ding. Is this number one on our list? <laughs> well, they, you know, I don't I, know. That might be trickier because I don't want to be scripted. Yeah. yeah. I don't I like, yeah, I like giving some input. Yeah, or, or even reviewing their qualifications or something. What do you think, Mike? I think, you know, maybe ask them to give us the applicants and let us just annotate on them questions we have for those particular applicants that they can then go back to the applicants and ask the questions instead of coming from us. Well, I wasn't thinking of all of the applicants. I, I, us. I mean, I, I think they ought to talk either to Lynn or to Mike or to both, but not to the rest of us. It, it isn't up for, because that makes it kind of sound, the, sound as though the five of the commissioners or four or five of the commissioners have some sort of a say. And I'd rather have it just be the executives, kind of Mike and Lynn, to throw in their advice if requested. I don't want to make it look as though we should be interviewing the candidates. But yeah, it, it, I, I think you can phrase it so that it doesn't, you know, we don't have any uh, ability to determine anything, you know, no determination, but, you know, just recommendations uh, or, you know, uh, or suggestions or comments, you know, like you said, just mark it up and, and they can do it with it what they will. But because, I mean, I, th I think they want information. I mean, I think they would like to be able to they, they never have in the past. They have, they have never sought any input from anybody else before. Right. It did sound as though... The times they are changing. <laughs> yeah. I, but not, that, that being said, Nat, before Mike and Vince joined us, we didn't have any turnover for many, many years. Hey, Roger, you were the, you were the newest, right? And yeah. It's been so, around a while, so... Part of that was that they just kept forgetting to do everything, and you know, and it would be, it would get way behind. I mean, they were not on the ball on that. They haven't been on the ball anywhere along the way. Well, maybe they should let you all uh, recruit your own board members. Well, we have. I mean, I, you know, I got David and I got uh, Brad. Well, maybe that's something we should discuss with them or suggest to them. Maybe they'd be happy to just get rid of it entirely. You know what I, what I don't know that we have to have a huge amount of formality and written form now. Maybe as we hand over what you would jot it down, now we, we just let's use this cycle to, to experiment with how we can collaborate better and make a better choice and may, and have a better experience for the applicants. And then the only other thing in delivering it that I would comment on is they seemed like they were behind and time was of the essence and there wouldn't have been, there wasn't gonna be time for the applicant to attend a meeting. I don't really understand the urgency. I would rather do it right for us and right for the applicants and take another month and have some sense of urge, you know. And that, I'm not sure that, what's urgent about it. There, there's no urgency. That's completely yeah. legit, Roger. That's a Sean thing that he thinks things have to happen by X date. Yeah. And I specifically spoke with the, right. you know, premier municipal attorney in Vermont. And he said, no, you're, you are a commissioner until you are replaced. So you can particularly either... since we don't have a vacancy, it's not like we're filling a vacancy. Exactly. Yeah. We're... Exactly. Yeah. And the two people who are up for election are Lynn and I. Yeah. Or re-election. So, well, so that's want... a that's an additional reason to to, to proceed so you want me to, carefully. Me, uh, want me to so I think one of our to do things, in my mind, is to clarify that a term ending does not necessarily create a vacancy, right? The vacancy is if somebody resigns or is terminated or well, I, I think, way or whatever. I, I think the statute does say that 
uh, it, it, it essentially is a vacancy. And someone I, needs yeah. to be reappointed. No, yeah, because they want. No, it doesn't say that. Actually, uh, OK. Yeah, you're probably but, right. But I, I, that's no, not how no. I remember it being phrased. The, the let's, statute anyway. Like amount of time, you know, you're appointed for three years. At the end of three years, it must mean something other than- There has just... to be a process, yeah. Right. There has to be an affirmation that you're reappointed. But the question is for right now, can we ask them to just proceed, proceed without feeling that there's an urgency that causes them to skip worthwhile steps? Worthwhile for both. I want to write that though? I don't feel comfortable writing the, telling them there's no urgency. That's their that's their call. I think our call is to give advice well, on how to. I solve. have no problem. Up up if you. I mean, I'll. One of us can say it over the phone to them. Yeah. We can express it there. How about I I, I redo that list I, I sent you guys, and mm -hmm. and and throw in advice from Lynn and Mike uh, and what what Mike. Ambrosino said about coming to at least one meeting, um, you know, and maybe leave it as a question: Would you, would you maybe want to have the board of commissioners uh, suggest new candidates when vacancies arrive, um, and point out that we see no urgency? I mean, I'm not even sure. Yeah, well, I don't know what. I'll I'll redo I'll redo something and send it around to you. Um, Great. I mean, I'd like to get something off to them relatively quickly because they they seem to be intent on writing up yeah. some sort of an ad right away. Yeah, I think yeah. If we can do it tomorrow, we should. Okay, I'll write it tonight and send it to you. All right. Well, let's let's leave it. I mean, it's not critical. It's it's their call, and we'll give them some advice. Oh, wait. on to so hang on. Nat yep. and Roger are going to work up a list and do what with it, and, and send it out to 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 you all to the the five of us. Okay. Yeah, when Nat was saying you, he meant he meant all of us. Yep. I okay. just wanted to make sure you didn't mean to the select board because it needs to come from all of you. Right. Right. Um. Okay. On to the uh, general manager's report and discussion. Um, you uh, and just just to follow up on that, so uh, you, uh, you and Roger are gonna draft something, send it to us for comment or mark. No, I think just Nat, you draft it and send yeah. it to us. Yeah, okay. All of the same okay. I sent I sent one draft. I'll I'll change that a little bit and send it to to you all, and then we'll see where we all are and whether we're we're ready to send it to um, to the select board. Okay, I'll, you know, I'll I'll do that and I'll get it out by tomorrow midday, maybe even tonight. I mean, this is in in as much as it's just advice, it's not really critical. You just don't want to step on their toes. We want to give them something helpful. Okay, um, general manager's report comments. I was looking for that picture, the, the attached picture. I, I wanted to see that, but I didn't see it. Of H11? I looked at it, maybe it just didn't show up in my- No, I couldn't get it out of my camera, Vance. I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, okay, yeah, no problem. But you'll be getting a lot more pictures. And they're almost, believe it or not, they'll be done with the steel, just about done with the steel this week. Yeah, you know, I meant to, wow. meant to go, go over there before uh, we left, but- uh, yeah, have to be in June. Um, I, uh, uh, so we're, we're, we're just generating questions about if we have questions about the, the report right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious about the, uh, the AMI system. Uh, the, the, it operates by a rate of frequency. So is that still from a vehicle? Is that from a base station? No, it's from a, uh, what's called a collector. And a collector is equivalent to a cellular linked radio. Oh, all right. So uh, yeah, what's going on, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a history. So 
our regulators um, and our legislatures both are putting a lot of pressure on the municipal electric departments in Vermont uh, for AMI because they are really pushing even harder to get all utilities into a position where we can have time of use rates uh, specifically right. targeting the expansion of EV charging and uh, green technologies. And incentives for, for demand side. Yeah, so nothing is uh, you know written in stone, but there's a lot brewing. And so two years ago, uh, VEPSA, the board of commissioners, the board of directors at VEPSA, including myself, formed a subcommittee to do an RFP and I'm on that committee. And we went out to bid, I think the 14 providers, uh, we narrowed that down to two providers and ended up landing with a Clara who originated the TWAX technology to a uh, power line carrier. Um, and I did an evaluation for an AMI system for Hardwick Electric on our own some years ago. And the cost of that was about $900,000, which was way too much money. And <clears throat> when we undertook this RFP process with VEPSA, um, there's an entity called Hometown Connections. And Hometown Connections was part of the American Public Power Association. There was a subgroup uh, a revenue producing group and one of their business models or modules was automated metering. So VEPSA and some other joint action entities across the U.S. ended up purchasing hometown connections um, with the intent of using their buying power because they have hundreds of thousands of meters in service right now under their arena um, and systems in service under their arena. And as a joint action agency working for joint action agencies, they promise us all kinds of savings and uh, joint licensure, which is a huge uh, expense for the 12 members of VEPSA to need 12 licenses instead of one. They really put the wood to you, to put it bluntly. So Hometown Connections set forth that, oh yeah, one license, joint action, we're going to save you all kinds of money. Well, when push came to shove, they couldn't do any of it. So we ended up with a Clara, and here we are two years later. A Clara is a great company. I've worked with them. I installed their system at Vermont Electric Co-op, so I know it very well. And I know the, guy, the same guys did the sales pitch to me here that did it back then. Um, it's a great product, but the price tag on it now is 1.2 million. So it's even worse than doing it by ourselves would have been a couple years ago. So I've done business with a guy named Randy Austin for 35 years or so. He used to run a electrical surplus company where he'd buy used equipment and sell it. And, you know, if you had a bushing on a transformer blow up and it was a 12 week lead time to get a new one, he usually had something in one of his warehouses that could get you by, you know, until your new one came in. He was really helpful. Well, over the years, his company, Austin International, dove into metering and they became a certified uh, test shop for multiple major manufacturers. They ended up entering into a partnership with ITRON and then they ended up getting into this new partnership uh, and I can't remember the company, but another big player um, and developed an AMI system that is this vision meter uh, under vision metering. They created their own company called Vision Metering where they make meters and they partnered with the radio systems people, the MDM people, and they put together a package based on uh, what's called the IOT, the Internet of Things. And that platform is an open architecture platform where Mike Ambrosino can decide he's going to make this chugger uh, that's the best chugger known to man. And it operates on the IOT platform. So anybody can use that platform. It's free. The software is essentially free. So there's no licensure requirement. All, all those costs go right out the window. 
and their system is a very low band, very high power radio system that is perfect in Vermont. It gets down in the valleys and to the, to the, through the trees, through basements, through walls. If a meter's inside, it can reach it. So that system, all installed, done deal. He's telling me $550,000 with all the bells and whistles you're going to get from McClara. That's a one-time investment up front, Mike. It's, so it's sort of a capital investment. It's oh, not, this will definitely, whatever we do will be a capital investment. Yeah. And your point was it's not an annual uh, license in it like, over and above the initial. Right. Where with the Clara, we have to end up paying fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars a year just for the licensure. Yeah, it's right. an annual license and it's a it's a proprietary ecosystem. It's all so, proprietary. That's yeah, you right. Can't, you can't get out to extract yourself from that. And you're stuck with yeah. that Clara's right. meters. You can't buy anybody right. else's meters. So with Vision, if if uh, Mike Ambrosino Meters wants to develop a meter that operates on the IoT, we can start buying his meters and use them in our system. And it's got a pretty pretty good uh, proven um, uh, data security uh, model too. So I'm very interested, and I think it's only prudent for me to evaluate something that's going to cost half of what it would otherwise for our ratepayers, and. I'm hopeful and positive. I've installed a 55 foot pole at the top of Bridgman Hill here. Uh, the ground of which is 50 feet higher than the ground level at the cell tower. So my, my antennas are gonna be about the same height as the ones on the top of the cell tower. Right. How, so, how big, how big and, is the pilot? Uh, well, he, he uh, Randy Austin is the guy. He loaned me all the equipment and uh, I said, well, the only thing is you got to buy the meters because I can resell the equipment if you end up not liking the deal or like how it works or whatever, but I can't resell meters that say Hardwick Electric on them to somebody else. And I said, yeah, that's fine. So I bought two dozen meters. Everything else is free other than plugging and playing and trying it out. So the meters are getting installed at the 24 worst possible radio locations we can find. And I hope to have the system up and running by the end of next week and we'll start doing some testing. That's great. Does the, um, does the radio interface on the, and the platform, does it allow for a control too? Say for example, uh, if it, you have, yeah, okay. So yeah, we can do remote disconnects, remote reconnects, all same bells and whistles as every other AMI system. Okay, great. So for example, uh, battery storage or something, you could pull from, uh, you could pull from whoever the, the, the customer was, you know, uh, the meter, it, it, yeah. the, the metering and the system has control capabilities. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Cool. So then Mike, you would, uh, over time, phase out the existing meters and buy these? Yes, if this is the rule, and that's the other thing that's kind of nice here is, um, you know, with a Clara, they're saying, okay, give us the 1.2 million and then we'll do it. Whereas with this system, I will literally be up and running for an initial investment of under $10,000 and we can change out a thousand meters a year for four years and be done. Yeah, you don't awesome. have to borrow any money or anything. And just a radial, uh, radial, radio taken uh, away. Well, radio. one of the, and one of the other expense or cost savings of this system is that that low band, high uh, power radio system can travel 20 miles radius, so it goes further than the the ends of our system. Uh -huh. Whereas with a Clara system, we're going to need something like 20 of those repeaters, which cost about. 50,000 bucks a piece. So that's a hundred thousand dollar savings right there. Yeah. So and more to maintain. Yeah. And exactly. That's my concern is who's going to fix this thing if it breaks. And I got 20 of them out there. That yeah. sounds like a nightmare to, that Mike's going to get stuck fixing. And yeah. the, the other stuff is a, a, well, it's not really off the shelf, but it's much more uh, uh, open source, I guess. Yes. It's plug and play. Absolutely. The only thing I'm missing right now is a, uh, getting the cell uh, cellular modem hooked up and we'll be up and running. Awesome. Where, where, where does he have one of these in systems installed now? Where's his largest one? 
I That's think all. they just did a big one for uh, for a municipality that has like 8,000 meters in Michigan. But they've recent since, uh, let me back up. So in our original RFP at VEPSA, this system was bid. They were one of the bidders. But we, the committee, eliminated them from contention uh, or consideration, I should say, because their technology was so new, number one, but also because uh, most of the municipal VEPSA members have electricity and water. And this solution didn't have water meters two and a half years ago, but they do have them now. So they got booted for two good reasons, but things have changed in the last two plus years. And I think, as I recall, they've deployed 13 of these systems across North America in the last two years and they sent me you know uh, letters of uh thanks and stuff copies of letters and thanks and stuff from those customers and welcome me to contact them to see how they like it how it's working etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm again i'm positive and uh hopeful but we'll know more in you know a month or two good deal sounds great but well, that, that's really uh, yeah i'm i'm just as excited as Vince on this one, because it felt like a gap in our offering and in our strategic plan. So getting that gap filled would be just great. Yeah, I, I happen to read the minutes of the, <clears throat> the last FEPSA meeting, and they were talking about the uh, Cl uh, uh, Clara or and I'm going, uh, it's just a uh, it's a money sink. Oh, yeah, it's huge. Uh, Everything has just enormous price tags and i i even made them circle back for hardwick electric uh and i said okay this is the cost for the radio frequency system what about a power line carrier system for hardwick electric i am very familiar with those i know they're not going to be a there will be no problem reaching 100 percent of the meters etc cetera, etc cetera. so they rebid that whole package for a power line carrier for us and the savings was like thirty thousand dollars on one point two million. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? Obviously, they don't want to sell that system. <laughs> so, elsewhere, authentic log homes that look like a good deal. Yeah, they're up and running. That'll offset some of these damn solar customers like Vince and me <laughs> and Nat and Roger. Roger, you're already accounted for. I'm just tracking on the new guys. Yeah, Brian was out harassing me today. Yeah, I don't mind. Get, put, get, we get that new meter, though. Uh, I've been playing around with uh, just battery discharge. Uh, and having the control on that, you know, you can draw. You have, uh, if you had 100 of them, you could definitely take a, take a slice off the, uh, the right. peak demand. Yep. So when we met with the select, when, the select board, I had the feeling that, Mike, when you uh, said something about the settlement and the lawsuit, that they were just plain bored. I mean, they, they, they made no comment whatsoever. <laughs> How do other people take that? Their reaction was very quiet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they're I, bummed out because I, they don't get any of it. <laughs> well, that was, yeah, that was being recorded as this is. And it's um yeah and i i, I think there was it was out of there it was out of they hadn't thought about it for a long time and it was it had had essentially gone away and okay now it's resolved great <laughs> right i lost my picture here why did i lose my picture we can see you probably broke your camera did I say something that annoyed the machine? <laughs> oh, yeah, there Internet of things. <laughs> it's already. Internet of things. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, onward to the more on the uh, manager's report. And then we got that special report. You can call that Mike, the interim, inter, in, internal memorandum. Yes. So that's fairly complicated, that internal memorandum. 
Are you, are you talking about going into executive session now, Matt? Well, where are we? Let's track through how we're doing on the agenda here. Where are we on the agenda? Yeah. Um, I don't know if this internal memorandum is. Well, the gentleman, we have that at the end. It's okay. The only other item on the agenda is executive session on an, for update on an employee matter. So where do you want Mike to discuss this internal memorandum? Well, I, I had a couple, one more question uh, just okay. from the variance report. Good. From the, Good. Uh, I was trying to figure out what uh, cost increasers were um, uh, why uh, more generation was a cost increaser for Fitchburg landfill, for example. So Fitchburg landfill is not our least expensive provider of power into our portfolio. So uh, they make more, we pay more for that power than we would if we're getting it from Seabrook. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah that would okay. seem odd, didn't it? I know you'd think a renewable source like that, it would be less expensive. And it's still a good, it's still a good uh, contract for us, but it's not as good as Seabrook. And the same thing with, okay. We haven't gone ahead and bought any, any, any new nuclear, have we? No, I actually hit uh, the team up at the last BEPSA board meeting as to where we were at with because as you recall, the portion of Seabrook that we replaced was only about 50% of it. Right. So we have another 50% to be done with by 2020 or replace or renew before 2022. Right. Um, and as VEPSA has shared, the price of power has never been lower than right now. So what the heck are we waiting for? Yeah. Um, yeah, I but, thought we were going to move ahead a little yeah, quick. So so Ken Nolan said that we should have options on the table uh, by September to replace that. So we're looking good. They're they're working on it. Good. Okay. September doesn't seem like tomorrow, but be here before you know it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, funny question. What's glove testing? Uh, so our linemen and I, anybody who is a qualified employee, uh, is a sit is issued. Uh, rubber gloves that are part of our personal protective equipment. Just conductivity or? So they are actually uh, if I had a pair of rub my rubber gloves, if I had my rubber gloves on, I can grab on to 17,000 volts <laughs> and I won't feel it. Cool. Uh, that. So those gloves are, they go through testing at least every six months at a test lab down in Massachusetts. And if they pass, they come back. If they fail, they get tossed out. And we get new ones. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, so you don't put the glove on and just t test it. Put the glove on and grab a line. <laughs> no. No, you, Who's you, gonna do it this month? <laughs> I am death row can do that. <laughs> hey, Michael, we had a we had a check to uh, Eagleston for Craftsbury Academy, of about sixty four hundred dollars. Yep. Is that? Total to date, or is that an actual monthly? It's been recurring. How much? How much do we pay for Crestbury? In legal uh, I would say all in, Mike. We probably ended up uh, spending eleven thousand, maybe twelve thousand on that whole thing. Yeah. Okay. I find it kind of amusing and odd that we're now not a defendant in that weird lawsuit. Uh, us in the town of Hardwick, now just the town of Hardwick. Yep. Based on a surge in electricity, I mean, the whole thing is not, we're out of it completely. Well, we're out of it legally, but um, we're not out of it completely. And uh, I'm I'm still the guy. And if there was a, you know, which I don't envision happening, but if and when there was ever a ruling by the court against us, it would still come out of either our or the town's VLCT insurance plan and we, we both have the same plan so they're defending us okay no the vlct is defending their insurance plan that's what's going on because they don't want to pay and nor should they right
Okay, so uh, do you need Mike um, on the internal memorandum? Do we need to do that in the executive session, or can we yes. just? No, no, we don't. No, we don't. No, no, no. It's fine. All that. That is the memorandum. Uh, you may or may not recall that Lynn had asked me to provide a summary of the whole 3319 goals, intentions, and numbers. And I said, yeah, don't you remember I did that some years ago? I'll be happy to dig it up and give you another copy. That's oh, that's it. the one dated November 18th, yes. 2016. Gotcha. Yes. That was just the historical refresh, mind refresher. And some of that remained accurate, but a lot of it changed. For example, the $80,000 price tag purchase was much lower than what originally was in the calcs. So we don't need to do anything on that. No, nope, that's just FYI. FYI. And we're moving ahead on the transmission line that we're purchasing. Yeah, I've signed off. It's a done deal. I, all we got to do is write the check and mail it. I can't believe how a good deal that sounds like. It is a good deal. Good for our rate bears. Yeah. Well, financials seem to be in good shape. Yeah, just a little tidbit. You know, we when I got here at the end of each month, we were lucky if we, if we had ninety to a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to not be there anymore. Yeah, because you just never know what to run into. All right, and it'll soon be more. Well, Mike will figure out a way to spend it. <laughs> no problem. So when do we expect to get that little pop of money? Uh, well, Brooke has to get the those approved signed minutes over to Ekman. And then he has to go through his whirly gigs. And then they'll issue payment, which uh, Brooke and Rusty went through quite a bit of contortions to get that provided to us in two separate checks because of the U S marshal service and how they account for things. And it turned into quite a to do. So Rusty and Brooke decided to hell with it. Just give us the one check. So that got simplified. So I would guess in the next couple of weeks, we should have it. So they'll send us the check and then we will pay. Uh, Brooke and we Rusty. pay Brooke. Yep. Whatever. Okay. All right, uh, any other questions on the finances? So then I guess we are ready to go into executive session to discuss employee matter. There are no objection to that. Do I hear a motion to go into executive, executive session to discuss an employee matter? The public discussion of which would jeopardize the employee and Hardwick Electric. I so move. Second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Turn the recording off and we'll, we're in executive session. Hang on. So we're in executive session at 544. Oh, I didn't get the time at 544 right. p.m. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to stop recording. Recording. There you go. Okay, we're out of executive session at 5.57. Uh, no action to be taken by the board. Uh, we go back to the agenda and it says other new business. Do we have any other and new business? Uh, I don't know. I did share with you guys that I, uh, I hired a new lineman, correct? Uh, yeah. No, I don't remember that. Yeah, I did. Okay, well, I don't remember uh, and I'm looking at hiring one more. So we'll have three full crews to run our three bucket trucks all the time. Uh, we have a huge amount of work ahead of us on this 3319 line. Uh, plus the H11 is going to require, the way I've configured the town now, we're going to have to build that express circuit through town with big wire uh, this year. So... We're going to need the extra crew for probably at least the next two or three years. 
in and in that time, I suspect Brian and Reno will be gone. So, but, so it's I'm succession planning for those guys long term. That's good. Is is there like uh well that prompts this question? Have you done any uh, load modeling at all for especially with uh you know with all the solar coming on on board? Yeah, any any solar project or any net metering, any generation uh, distributed generation project in excess of 15 kW has to be evaluated. So yes, they all get evaluated. Okay. Uh, the system, they have to do a system impact study on each one and the developer has to pay for that study. You've made a couple of different references to solar. Is there all of a sudden a, an increase in solar applications? Uh, we've had a steady stream for the last probably 18 months, just mm -hmm. nonstop. Uh, we do have, um, Mike and Vince, you may or may not be aware, but VEPSA is actually partnered with Encore on another solar project in our territory, besides us being partnered with Encore on the H11. VEPSA partnered with Encore on a project on Center Road. Our project is 1.65 megawatts. The one on Center Road is 2.2 megawatts. So it's even bigger than ours. Um, but it's going, it's coming on to the state's uh, grid as a, uh, of course, I'm going to have a brain cramp. A, uh, provider block so it's out of the developer provider block which has to be a partnership with the utility and none of the utilities use that block so vepsa said hey let's put in an application and they did and they got approved for two of them one in morrisville one in hardwick and the, each of those will generate about 12 to fifteen thousand dollars of revenue for hardwick electric annually so those projects, they have nothing to do with net metering. They are developer block uh, and the pricing is uh, an auction. That's how the projects get awarded. 10 developers put in projects for 2.2 megawatts each. I can do this one for a penny, this one for two pennies, whatever, and then the state awards them. And VEPSA was actually awarded these two, the Hardwick and Moore. These are forward capacity auctions or? No, no, the, it's called a standard offer. That's what I was trying standard to do. Offer, standard right. offer projects. Yeah. So, so, the, so, big... so what happens is every kilowatt hour that this 2.2 megawatt project generates on center road, all the utilities in Vermont buy their proportionate share of that kilowatt hour. So Green Mountain Power will actually buy the vast majority of that power. And Hardwick Electric will basically pay nothing and get twelve thousand dollars in revenue every year from it. So the revenue is coming from the production or from the, the Rex? Comes from the developer. Oh. Because he's in our territory, or why do we because the state awarded them this this developer stand developer block okay. standard offer project? It's a 20-year deal. So Hardwick Electric is the facilitator. The energy comes into the Vermont grid through us. Okay. And the studies show, yep, we can handle that, et cetera, et cetera. But everybody pays for that energy, not just us. So right. as if it was net metered, we'd pay for all of it at an, at an exorbitant rate. This is at the top of Slap Hill as you come up the hill on the right. Yep. 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 Is there any uh uh any plans on I mean I, I know there are there's some transition, especially in, in the case of solar, to have the inverters be uh, grid forming rather than grid following. You know, I don't know if that's like in the plans or. Uh, yeah, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah, and, that's that's a whole that's a whole different safety bailiwick. Yeah, yeah. I, I know there have been a couple of successful projects that are relatively big, but. Uh, and in, I in, I. I would venture, Vince, that those are targeting <clears throat> maybe like the community of Craftsbury, Vermont. <clears throat> so oh, if something happens, you know, things switch over automatically and Craftsbury becomes an island. Yeah. That's, yeah, we're not, 
I am not aware of any projects in Vermont heading down that road just yet. But yes, that's possible. Anybody have any other feedback um, about the settlement with the auditors? I've heard very little. I haven't heard anything. Apparently our press release was perfect. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? So, have you gotten any uh, like phone calls or anything, Mike? Not from customers, just from reporters. So it's uh, their reaction is the same as the select board. Yeah, <laughs> so far. All right. And Good. your paper, Mike, over in St. J. When 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 will they pick it up? Oh, they already did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They ran their article uh, Thursday, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, well, next so they're week. daily. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah daily. they're daily. Yeah. But they didn't get anything from me or Brooke until Wednesday. Wednesday morning, yeah. And so how about in Newport? They got it Wednesday, the same day. as every, We gave it to the Gazette on uh, Monday. Monday, Monday night after. after the meeting. I sent it to them. And then we they waited until their paper printed and went out. And then we gave it to everybody else. Yep. I looked at the free press for the next couple of days and I didn't see anything because they had picked up the original suit when we, we filed suit. They had that on the front page. Yeah. But old news now. Yep. Okay. The uh, third Monday in June is the 21st. I don't Five o'clock. I assume. Hey, does anybody have, uh, I can't find the attendance schedule for us going to the select board meeting. All right, I'll fess up. I, I raised my hand and I said, I'd try to do it. You what? I raised my hand some months ago when you were going through the months and said, I'd try to cover June select board if you need it. No, no, I'm signed, I'm taking care of this Okay. Thursday. And Nat did, to... Nat did it last month. I I have I don't think I ever saw the schedule, and I know. <laughs> oh, you were, I sent it to you guys, but I didn't keep a copy. I went through my emails. You, I can probably find it. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I was on there for June. I remember that much. Okay. Okay. So. So when would June be? When do I have to try to keep my calendar open? I, I'm going to have some travel, I think. Thursday. Time in a year and a bit. Yeah, it's the. They do the first it? and third Thursdays of the month, and we always go to the third. Thursday. So I'm looking at the calendar. One, two, that's the 17th. Yeah. And it's what time do they meet? 6 30 ish. Six o'clock, but you won't be speaking until like 6 30 or a quarter to seven. And are they doing in person or just Zoom? I believe they're back in person now. Oh well the last one yeah. I went to was still Zoom. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll send you the invite anyway. But I think you can probably do Zoom no matter what. Yes. Even if they are in person. Yes, I think you can. Okay. So even if you're in Innsbruck, you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably won't be going anywhere. I'm, I'm just hoping I will. Be. I thought he was going to Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you, Mike. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> All right. Um, so I will redo the note and uh, pass it around and we'll have a meeting on June 21st. And I think that's it. Yep. Anything else? Any other new business? And you might have to go back to Belpre, uh, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt there. No. Okay. In that Beautiful case, I think, I think we have ending, ending this meeting at 6.07 PM. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I yes. move to adjourn. Move to adjourn and second it. I'll second it. Second. I don't, I don't, I never understood why you need to have a motion to adjourn, and I'm not really sure you do, but okay. I so, think the convener can adjourn the meeting anytime he wants. I think so too. Yep. All right. With Thank Luke. you for convening that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm good at convening. Okay, 607. We've we're ending. See you around, and uh, you'll get a note from me fairly pronto. Okay. So, yeah. okay. Thank Bye. you all. Bye-bye.